Dankzij die omliggende berge en unieke geografie is Kaapstad gesetel in een web van water wat een noodzakelijke vangnet is voor biodiversiteit en menselijke volhoudbaarheid. Ek raak nooit moog vir die ongelooflike mooi uitzichte rondom my stad nie. As jy na die landskap kyk, is daar water oorals. Ons het die ikoniese vleilande. Daar is zandvlei en dan in die verte is dit ziekevlei en rondevlei. Maar daar is baie meer rag oor Kaapstad. Ek is op pad na een minder bekende vleiland, een versteerde juweel en een bewys wat gebeur as passievolle mense met die visie saamwerk. What makes this vlei so special and so unique? You know, this whole area once upon a time was a, a massive wetland. It would have been kind of like the Okavango swamps, just teeming with animals and plants. For me, I think what makes it particularly special is, is the history and the way people have connected to the space over generations. The name Princess Flay comes from this koi woman. The princess, she would come to the Flay uh, with her cattle and she'd bathe in the Flay. And on one of these journeys, she encountered these sailors. And the sailors attacked her. This is what the, the legend says. Princess Fly was for you a verwaarloos distortingsterrein wat vir ontwikkeling geoormerk is. Nou het dit een gedaante verwisseling ondergaan en dit is een veilige haven vir bedreigde species. Mm. This is quite a disturbed space. Mm. On an edge. Yeah. And they're just thriving here. They're hey? thriving. We haven't had first years on site in the last hundred years, uh, and this is Cerulea funiculaceae. It's, it's a type of Cersea, and it was thought to be extinct. So basically, what you're telling me is, this is your office. <laughs> yeah. You have to have these corridors where the plants and animals can move through. The, the fanbore species rely on the sunbirds, the sunbirds rely on the fanbores, and if you don't have spaces running through the urban areas from the mountain, then all of those species will die out. Toe een winkelcentrum en taxi staanplek ontwikkeling op hierdie terrein gebou sou word, het die gemeenskap op baie maniere daarteen geskop in sluitende protees aanplanting. Hulle kreatieve en gecoordineerde acties het die unieke spasie gered en die weg gebaan vir gemeenskapsbewaring en herstel van die omgeving. What I think the city didn't realize was that people attached a lot of value to the space. One side was from a biodiversity point of view, but it was really the, the, the people who had this kind of social and cultural attachment to the space. People who had been coming here as small children, one of the few places that people of color could go to that had water in it as a kind of recreational space. Wow. <laughs> and then I jump out of the water. My grandfather taught me how to fish at Princess Flay. Kids swimming, people fishing, there were people being baptized with such a busy place, but so little infrastructure at the time. Alex Lansdown is a restaurant kenner, and before he was a state's geword het, was he betrokken by work on Princess Fly to her eertijdse pracht to herstel. More than 40,000 new plants are here geplant in sluitende 13 bedreigde species. At the end of the day, restoration is about restoring processes, not yeah. just planting plants. I love that. So wetlands really kind of the glue that holds the landscape together. They often the areas we find the most amount of species. Our wetlands perform a function where they're taking stormwater from the city, cleaning that. So you can think of them kind of like as the filters of the system before it's released out to the sea. But also a lot of animals use that obviously in their life cycle. So like frogs and amphibians are largely tied just to wetland systems. Birds use it for nesting. Roonvlei is bekend vir sy trop in woonende seekoeie, maar ek is hier om een baie speciale fijnboos specie te leer ken en dit beteken by jou by Dalton. And the Cape Flats has the highest concentrations of endangered plants in the world. Mm -hmm. And to see some species that were thought to be completely extinct, being found again, being brought back and put together and re-established at the reserve, it's been a fantastic privilege. This particular erica is what we call the Cape Flats erica. It's uh, Erica verticillata, and it was thought to be extinct by 1950. And then a single plant was discovered in a park in Pretoria. But unfortunately, we found that that one single plant didn't produce any seed. In the late 1700s, is a plant gelukkig teruggeneem for the hertog van Oostenrijk, so botanische versameling en oorleef van dag nog. 
It then subsequently produced seed with what we call the Kirstenbosch and Pretoria plant. After 13 years, we put a match to the population, we burnt them. We've got 21 seedlings, that's the first generation you can see in the background. This is, uh, this is quite a champion. How resilient, eh? If you just give it a chance, uh, uh, these plants can make a, a comeback. Baie mooi. Om harmony tussen mense, water en wilde species te skep, is bestuur in stedelike ruimtes nodig. En soms betekent dit om vis te vang. Parents, your job seems pretty cool, eh? You fish, you chill outside. Whilst this is one part of my job, which is biomonitoring, uh, it's a lot more multifaceted than this. This is actually an artificial water body. We've lost the natural characteristics of this flay. Whereas most people will regard a wetland as being fresh water, we have salt water in this flay. Oh. Mm. And that, that's a critical aspect because it allows us to control alien fish, which are generally favoring cool. fresh water. So we have a lot of indigenous marine species in here that come into the flay to breed or as juvenile fish to find a nursery where they can grow in a safe, sheltered environment and exit back out to the ocean again. In the past seven years, Zanflay has seen a dramatic increase in the salinity of the system. Due to how we manage the mouth of the estuary and how much seawater we allow in, Zanflay historically would not have been a fish nursery. Now it's the only functioning fish nursery on the whole of the False Bay coastline. Fish that have been tagged in Zanfle, like we're trying to do today, have been caught as far up as Durban. And what exactly are we fishing for here today? <laughs> <laughs> Not sharks, but specifically we're after Leofus. We're going to measure them, we're going to tag them, and set them free again. And over time, we'll start to gather data, which will be able to tell us about the size and the health of the population. Met so a macht om biodiversiteit, is dit van kardinale belang dat hierdie vleilande bewaar word, maar die manier waarop ons leef en ons stede bestuur, plaas hulle onder voortdurende druk. Kaapstadse vleilande is biodiversiteit brandpunte, maar al die afval en riool wat ons stelsels nie kan hanteer nie, eindig hier, wat hulle oorleving en onsin bedreig. Oor kan nonne vlei is Zico vlei, wat ook herhaldelike probleme gehad, wat die ekosysteem beinvloed het. Zico vlei het een ongelooflike biodiversiteit en is vernoem na die seekoeie wat eers hier geblei het. Dit is nou ook gas hier vir menselike activiteite. Die vriende van Zico vlei en Ronde vlei is een gemeenskapsorganisatie wat deerslaggevend was om beide die druk op die regering vol te hou om kwesties aan te spreek, terwijl hulle ook saamgewerk het. So to be a friend, you've got to make sure you've got the passion for the environment. Some of the work we do is real dirty work when we remove tons and tons of dirt. Um, the other one is we remove alien vegetation. Zico vlei is controlled by the False Bay Nature Reserve and we exist solely so that they can do their job efficiently. False Bay Nature Reserve is a Ramsar site. There are birds uh, that have been ringed here and they've been found uh, 12,800 kilometers away in Siberia. Ramsar is an international treaty particularly aimed at conserving migratory bird species. But it's also expanded to wetlands of international importance. Rondeplay is a unique wetland and it's one of the reasons why False Bay Nature Reserve is a Ramsar site. The city of Cape Town has applied to become a Ramsar wetland city. It extends the protection and the emphasis of wetlands all across the city of Cape Town, whether they're in protected areas or not. Die stad het sê dit dien aangekondig dat hulle aansoek suksesvol was wat goeie nies is. Maar met meer as 4 miljoen mense in Kaapstad wat tonne en tonne afval produseer, bly die beskerming van ons vleilande makkeliker gesê as gedaan. People can't live where there's water and wetlands. There's something like 95% of the wetlands in Cape Town have been completely transformed in drains. And then in most cases our wetlands have been connected to the city's urban stormwater system. Hmm. And that comes with it all sorts of challenges, from sewage overspills to polluted stormwater. And that results in what we call eutrophication, which is the excess nutrients into our ecosystems. We get a blue-green algae, which is actually toxic. We find that a lot of reeds are dying off at the moment. When the weather becomes a little bit warmer, we are going to see more of the blue-green algal blooms. And we'll probably also see fish die-offs. There have actually been spillages on, a, on an ongoing basis for the last year. Uh, this is okay, due to load shedding largely, but uh, there are things that the city could be doing to mitigate the impact that the spills are having at the moment. We've put pressure on the city for many things to be done to protect our environment. It took us a hell of a long time, uh, but they actually installed our litter fences which stop hard litter coming in. 
put staff into the uh, flay areas to actually assist us in removing tons of litter. So the city has come to the party on some of the issues, but we implore them to look at the sewage issue that's really destroying our environment. Activisten maak al vir jare lawaai en Kaapstad se nuwe burgemeester het dit sy missie gemaak om hierdie ingewikkelde en onwelriekende kwessie aan te spreek. Een hoopvolle ontwikkeling is die vorming van die artikel 80 waterkwaliteit in vleilande en waterwee adviescomitee. Some of the best and brightest minds in citizen science, community conservation, aquatic ecology, uh, engineering and water disciplines, and they're really helping guide the Mayor's Priority Programme on Inland Water Quality and Sanitation. A recent talk star hulle in die gesig, vooral in die licht van uiterste ongelijkheid, wat een nalatenskap van apartheid is. Die meeste mense weet nie dat daar een vleiland in Kajalija is nie, en dit het een paar visionare inwoners gevat om die rijke verscheidenheid wat daar is te ontbloot. Voor die Kajalitja Canoe Club om gestalte te kry, moes een stuk van die Kals rivier en omliggende vleiland eers skoon gemaakt word. So in the beginning, people were thinking we were just playing around, the two grown-up guys board playing in the wetlands. And we've been doing this since 2013, seven. Ja, ja, so it's nine years now. Ja. In 2016 het internationale toeriste besoek afgele, maar as gevolg van inperking in die COVID-19 pandemie was een nieuwe begin nodig. We grew up in this area since 95. We used to go and swim in this um, base here. Guys, what's up? It was like I feel like a kid again. Bye guys. Eh? <laughs> so you, we, we come today, we clean. Tomorrow we find uh, another a pile of litter somewhere. So we want to educate the, the neighborhood as well in that aspect so that they can stop littering in the wetlands. So how exactly have you been going about getting the community involved? Teaching the kids how to paddle and then in return we ask them to go and, and let the, their parents know that they must not dump in this wetlands because mm. they are paddling here. Parents were happy to see their kids having something to do rather than playing in the streets. It has been uh, lots of downs and ups. But uh, we are here nine years later. We have a group of volunteers helping us. We have boats, we have waders, we have everything we need except for financial support. One of the options that is researched is to make biochar a ground to make the indringer water hyacinthe that is spread. Us cleaning this, uh, this space here is not only for us to paddle, but for the wildlife to thrive. This used to be a very filthy place. So it was the first time I saw a fish after a long time, and it was a catfish, and it was big. One thing is sure, the renewing of flylanders and gemeenskappe loop hand on hand. So one of the things we've done for every year for the last 10 years is having a procession or parade through the streets. The Princess Fly Forum is a gemeenskaps organisatie wat ontstaan het uit die protest aksie en hulle het 'n doelbewuste besluit geneem om hulle aandag op kinders te focus. So the idea of bringing the flare into the community in the form of that procession and then leading the community back down to the flare and the kids have a ball. We're all dead by the end but the children are. We're doing a lot of work with the city and trying to envision the space as an interconnected um, System. From a situation a decade ago where the community and developers in the city were, were all on different teams, we're now working together to improve the water quality and the environmental management of the site. Part of our protest work was, was building a vision with the community. So we went to so many different groups and we said, what would you like to see here? We did stop it and that community vision has become manifest. And I think that's really profound for people. We have to be the guardians of the site. You know, politicians come and go, uh, regimes change, governance change, but what is consistent is the communities. If we were to lose all of our wetlands overnight, water wouldn't recharge into the aquifers. Our groundwater would either become polluted or it would run out, meaning that our trees and our natural vegetation wouldn't survive. We're part of nature and we have to live in a way that is more compatible with all the other species. Standing here one day and saying, I did it. And then there's a canoe sprint race going down here. 
I'll be the happiest guy. Once a special place is gone, it's going to be gone forever. I just, I just really hope that we can save it and improve on it.